Hello, good morning everybody. I'm here to tell you a story, a story that happened a long time ago in the Italian Peninsula where we live. It's a story about kings, queens, explorers and a new territory. The Iberian Peninsula was divided in five kingdoms, the Kingdom of Navarra, the Kingdom of Portugal, the Corona de Castilla, the Corona de Aragon, and a small territory called the Kingdom of Granada where Muslims lived. In 1469, Isabel and Fernando, from Isabel from Castilla and Fernando from Aragon, got married. They were not yet the Queen of Castilla or the King of Aragon. They became Fernando II of Aragon and Isabel I of Castilla 10 years later. So in 1479, when they became King and Queen of the different kingdoms, they unified their territories. Although both kingdoms still get their own laws, and their own institutions, and they were known as the Spaniards. Some years later, in 1492, the uh, Catholic kings conquered the Kingdom of Granada, that kingdom that was made by Muslims. They finished the reconquest with that conquest, and they imposed Christianity to all territories, expelling and prohibiting all religions. At the end of the 15th century, the Reyes Catholicos extended the territory through a lot of parts of Europe and the north of Africa. They conquered the Reino de Navarra in the Iberian Peninsula, the Kingdom of Naples in Italy. They also conquered Melilla in the north of Africa and other territories, and also the uh, Canary Islands. The Reyes Catholicos had five children, Isabel, Juan, Juana, Maria, and Catalina. They tried to marry all of them making political and territorial alliances with other countries in Europe so they will get more powerful and have more territories. All their daughter, daughters become queens of different European countries because they got married with kings of those countries. When Isabel I died, the daughter Juana, who was called La Loca, after, and his husband Felipe, who was called El Hermoso, became king of Queen of Castilla. But this is a story I will tell you in another moment. In the 15th century, most of the people thought the earth was flat, square. In Europe, they only knew Europe, Africa and part of Asia. They brought very valuable products as silk or species from Asia, or Las Indias as they call it. But the trip was very long and dangerous. Some countries travel all over Europe and Asia, and other countries have to travel around Africa to get to those regions. But Cristobal Colón, who was an Italian sailor and explorer, thought that the earth was round, and that if he traveled to the west, he will get to Las Indias, that means Asia. That trip would be shorter, less dangerous, and cheaper too. Cristobal Colón proposed his ideas to many kings and governors in Europe, but none of them wanted to raise their money for something so unclear. Finally, he convinced the various Catholics of Spain to finance his expedition. They signed something that they called the Capitulaciones of Santa Fe. In the, those documents, they agreed to share between the Reyes Catholicos and Colón the territories he conquered and the gods he found there. The 3rd of August, 1492, Cristóbal Colón left Huelva, traveling west with three caliber ships. On 12th of October, 1492, after a very long and difficult voyage, the sailors finally saw land. At the beginning, they thought they were in Asia, in Las Indias, and they explored and conquered new lands. Cristóbal Colón made three more voyages, conquering and exploring many other territories. Cristóbal Colón died in 1506, knowing that the earth was round, he was right, but still believing that he had arrived to Asia, to Las Indias. Some years after Colón's death, an Italian explorer proved that it was not Asia, but a different continent. That explorer was called Americo Vespucci. So, the new continent was called America. When the Spanish landed in America, they found an island inhabited by different groups of people. We call those people pre-Columbian civilizations. They had their own language, religion, culture, social organization, scientific advances, etc. They were the Aztecs, who lived in the valley of present-day Mexico. 
the Mayans, who lived in the south of present-day Mexico, Guatemala, and Honduras, and the Incas, who lived in present-day Peru, Ecuador, and parts of Bolivia. Spanish invaders, as Hernán Cortés or Francisco Pizarro, explored the continent and conquered the different cultures and societies, imposing the culture, language, and religion from Europe. That means that in the part they explored, they imposed Spanish and Christian religion. Spain and Portugal were both very powerful empires, and they both wanted to control the trade with Las Indias. So, in 1494, they made an agreement. El Tratado de Tordesillas. They trace a line in the Atlantic Ocean. Everything at the east of that line will belong to Portugal. This way, P Portugal made sure they had all power in Africa and they could travel to Las Indias going around that continent as they were doing. Everything at the west of that line will belong to Spain. This way, they made sure to be the only country that could travel to Las Indias in that direction and the new land wouldn't be exploded by other countries. Thanks to that agreement, Spain conquered most of the American continent, and Spain became the most powerful empire in Europe. This way, most of uh, the South American continent now speaks Spanish, and only one part of it speaks Portugal, like the part in Brazil that was at the east of that land. The Spanish people mined for silver and gold in the new territory and took them to Europe. The society was organized by race, being the Spanish the wealthiest and more powerful, and the Native Americans were very badly treated, and many times they were treated as slaves. The discovery of America was a very important event that changed the culture, society, and many other things in Europe and all over the world. It marks the beginning of the modern age. Bye!